I think this is the last lesson we have to do for this third page. You're almost done. This is going to be pages 26 through 27, using substitution to solve equations together. And uh, they walk through an example there on um, page 26. And it would be good to follow that example and see how they are solving that. Um, notice when you get to the very end, you're going to end up with an x and a y value. It's nice when it ends up being whole numbers or integers, but sometimes it does end up being fractions. All right, let, let me give you a tip that will help, okay? Um, when we're doing substitution, you don't have to always solve for y first, or you don't have to always solve for x, or you don't have to always choose the first equation. So I think it's helpful to examine the whole, you know, all four of the x and y terms, and if you can find one of them, that does not have a, have a number in front of it. In other words, the coefficient is one. That's the one you want to solve for, okay? Zero in on that and say, I'm solving for that one. Rearrange that equation until you have x equals something or y equals something, and then you take that quantity and plug it in to the other equation in place of that variable that you just solved for. Let me illustrate it with one of the problems that we have. Now, I, I chose one of the scary ones because it has fractions, okay? Oh, you know what? I forgot to write down the rest of that problem. Let me just quick um, tack on. <clears throat> this was the scary one. 4x plus 30 equals 14y. Yeah, there's a couple things I want to tell you when we get to that problem. But let's, um, let's work our way through this one. So first off, I see that I have just y right here. Okay? So I could take this equation and switch sides, switch signs. Remember how to do that? So 2x Bring the 18 over, it becomes plus 18 equals, take the y to the other side, and now you have y. Now you could take this and plug it into this equation right here in place of y, okay? And then you have one-fifth times that quantity. Um, let me give you another tip on this one. Anytime you have fractions, maybe you remember this from a previous lesson, it's a lot easier if you just get rid of the fractions. So find a common denominator, which in this case would be 20, okay? And just go ahead and multiply everything through by that. And that will give you 5x plus 4y equals 20, okay? We're distributing it times each of these. Now I can take what y is equal to and plug it in here. So I keep the 5x plus 4 times the quantity 2x plus 18 equals 20. And now we have everything in x, all right? So you can distribute it out and finish solving that. I mean, you can solve it with fractions. It's just not my favorite thing to do, okay? Looking over here, similar tip. Let's get rid of the fraction. So what could I multiply through by to get rid of the, the, this denominator? Whatever the denominator is, okay? In this case, I only have one denominator, so I'll just multiply everything by two, and that will give me for this equation, x equals, and that becomes six y, and then we distribute the two times negative five and get negative 10. <gasps> and look, yay! This is already solved for x. x equals this quantity, and now you can substitute that in place of x here. So we just set up a template, right? Make sure you keep the plus 30 equals 14y, and you know how to take it from there. I'm not gonna finish it for you. Distribute it out, bring all the y's to one side, take the numbers to the other, finish solving. <clears throat> now that only gives you one value, that would be the y value, and then you have to go back, but look, it's real easy. Once you know what number this works out to be for y, y equals whatever, plug that in right here, six times that number, subtract 10, and you'll have the corresponding x value, okay? So the answer to all of these, same here, this one here, you're gonna solve for x first. So that will give you your x value, take it back to 
I'll take it back right here. Y is this quantity. So whatever you get for X, plug it in for X, two times that number, plus 18, and then you'll know what the Y value is. And don't forget, in all of these, these are all consistent equations, so they do cross, and we're literally finding the one point that will satisfy the X and the Y for both equations at the same time. All right, that concludes this lesson. I hope I didn't go too fast and that you understand what we were doing there. Nice thing about the score key um, at this level is they do show one way that you could solve it. There, I want to make sure you understand and your supervisor, your parent, that fast, the score key is only showing one of four possible ways you could solve each of these problems. Okay, But you should, no matter how you solve it, you should still get the same answer. Okay, so, so using a different method, uh, solving for a different variable first, I should say, will yield the same answer. So don't work it wrong if you solved it differently, if you came to the right conclusion. All right, I think the next couple pages are review, and then you have a checkup, self-test, pace test, and we'll be back to talk about the next pace in a little bit.